This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Welcome to 2019, 2019. If any of you guys saw my post today, I said no more resolutions, no more resolutions. We want results, not just resolutions. And so what I discovered as it relates to resolution, the number one New Year's resolution is to lose weight. And that means area gyms and health clubs will be bulking up with additional members at least for a few weeks of well-meaning, if not totally dedicated folks looking to shed pounds. If history has proved anything, the fitness craze is a race that begins and ends for many people in just a few weeks. Well, today's guest is not a personal trainer, but she is passionate about helping people find rejuvenation and renewal amidst the stresses of life and relief from the pain to show up in their bodies because of that stress. Her body work style, yes, I said it, her body work style is nurturing and holistic. Who am I talking about? I am talking about my friend, my girl, Candace J. Micken. She is the lead massage therapist of Sacred Touch Body Work. Her mission is to reconnect the body with the mind and spirit uh, through enhancement of body awareness and various body modalities in a life in a safe, secure environment. She is licensed in both Maryland and D.C. for massage therapy. She's adept at delivering deep tissue and Swedish massage therapies via table or chair. But her specialty and passion is in the Thai massage, which is done fully clothed. Let me say that again for all my folks who like to get naked, fully clothed and on the mat on the floor. What I discovered is in my research, the Thai massage is the ancient healing method originating in the Southeast Asia. I'm sure it got some African roots. We always said Asians control stuff, but black folks been doing stuff all over the country. But she called it Thai massage. She didn't call it African massage. Ken is also a registered yoga teacher and has studied West African dance, Qigong, and the martial arts. Meaning she would stretch your body out, kick your ass, meditate, and pray over you and get you out of her facility Real quick, she regularly incorporates the movement into all her body work activities, and she is regularly invited to be a guest speaker at group events and send around women's empowerment, safe, non-sexual touch, body awareness and movement at private settings, healing ceremonies, clinics, community outreach programs. But she is in the bomb shelter today, and we are excited with her, she is going to do some massaging right here on the table. If y'all can see right now, my clothes are not on. So she acts like we have to be clothed, but she just lied to all of you guys. I am so excited, excited that Candace is here. As you know, as you can hear my voice, Candace is my girl, my friend. We've traveled outside of the country. The reason, Candace, I created Sound Bombing is because I got some dope friends. I got some people that people need to know and some people don't know and you are one of them and as I talked about it at the beginning of the year there are a lot of people running to running to the health spas a lot of people uh, wanting to change their diet I don't know what January 1st actually means because January 1st can be January 2nd 3rd or 4th you change when you want to change on that particular day and so I'm excited that you are going to offer maybe something new to a group of people that might not be familiar with Thai massage. I'm sure people out there are listening, and they've 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 uh, uh, been uh, connected to massage. So let's get started. How, first of all, how did you get started doing Thai massage? Oh, we just jumped right in. Just you just jumped, jumped right, right in, in on the floor, huh? In the Thai massage. <laughs> I'm gonna just go jump right back in. Sorry. We just talk about body work in general because you mentioned about the New Year's resolutions and how people are working out their body. And um, I consider myself a body worker and a massage therapist. 
And what that means is that I'm interested into the mind, body, um, the mental bodies and your spiritual bodies, as well as your physical um, body work. So I just wanted to start right there with laying the groundwork in the context for what body work to me is. So when you walk up to a person and they say, what do you do? You say, I specialize in body work. Like, give me just give me a response to what somebody says to you once you say that. Like, what's the craziest thing that you might hear? So you walk on the street. What do you do? I do body work. Well, what do they typically say? Normally, because I'm in a very um, specific environment, I'm not just walking up the street. Strangers, <laughs> so I'm normally in a context of body work. But one thing that I found, especially in our community, in the African American community, is there's a um, an immediate response, a visceral response when they hear body work um, or massage. There, there's a lot of connotation around that. Some people may be thinking, oh, it's something sexual, it's something sensual, or even now with people so-called involved in Tantra, there's some, oh, there's energy work that, again, is related to a sexual nature. Whereas body work, really, there's nothing that we do in life that is not related to our bodies, right? What we ingest, how, what we put on top of our body, how we move our body, how we meditate and have our mental thoughts, all of that is considered body work. So what, so what is that misnomer comes from that people think when you're talking body work or massage, that there's some type of sexual connotation? Mm -hmm. I think specifically within the massage industry, period, um, within America and around the world, um, a lot of people, there used to not be regulations. Regulations around the massage uh, therapy industry are fairly new within the past, I don't know, 10, 20 years, and it's changing all of the time. And so there's places in the past where you could go to get sexual favors. I think that's no secret. It still happens, I'm sure, here in the States and all around the and world. And we'll give you those at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and all around the world. And also within your own relationships, most people have a spouse or a mate and their context around massage is of a sensual nature. Maybe it's being used to, you know, provide peace and relaxation, but also to maybe get you in the mood for something else. And people that I've discovered, a lot of people don't recognize that, that there's a therapeutic benefit to massage therapy and body work. And I think that's why it's at the forefront right now where there's this whole wellness and holistic uh, lifestyle is at the resurgence. So what drew you to this work? <laughs> so share that story. Walk us through that story. Uh, I'm still walking through that story. Okay. And the reason I say that because I believe with body work, it is not just a matter of, oh, I went to massage school for almost two years, which I did, and I learned a technical skill. Um, I believe that I got into body work because I have my own spiritual and energetic uh, lessons that I'm continuously learning. Um, I'm very sensitive to the world around me and being in groups. And so I never thought mm, even two, three years ago that I would be able to literally touch different people every day in a therapeutic way because I'm just sensitive. So I got into body work because I've always gone to receive massage therapy, um, whether that, because I've always been pretty active, whether that's because I had a pain or some type of muscle um, tension or I needed to relax. I've struggled with um, anxiety for many years, and I found that body work was very calming to my nervous system. So even before I decided to become a practitioner, um, I've always been utilizing very body, various body work modalities. So you actually started working on yourself first. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think all of us start working on ourselves first when it comes to body work. So why Thai massage? And explain mm -hmm. the difference between traditional massage and Thai massage. Okay. So... Because I love Thai food. Is it connected to the country? You know, I think that's why I love it. Yeah, too. you and I love That's one thing that we know. We love Thai food. <laughs> Shout out to all my folks from Thailand. But yeah. why Thai massage over the other types of massage? Yes. Yeah. So in um, my particular massage therapy school, when we really are exposed to a lot of different modalities. But in general, we're learning about table massage. And most people, when you say massage, they're thinking of 
massage that's done on the table where you're draped by a sheet or a blanket or if you've been in the airport or a mall you may see chair massage um, and that's those techniques and skills is primarily what my massage school taught me but through that journey as well I was introduced to a, a, um, a classmate who is from Thailand and she also was a Thai massage practitioner and so that piqued my interest to look more into it and I enjoyed it so much after practicing that I then decided to go to Thailand and I studied at one of the temples there which is called Wat Po and I went to the Chetawan school which is in uh, Chiang Mai and that experience was amazing um, more so than the techniques that I learned in Thailand but in order to really embody the medicine and the practice, because I do believe Thai massage is a medicine, um, being in the midst of the culture is what was enlightening to me. Being able to see the, the Thai culture, you mentioned the Thai food earlier, of course, the food was amazing. But then you have these traditions that I've seen not only in Thailand, but all across the world, especially in Africa, where people honor their ancestors daily, where they're in the mindset of being the continuum between those that have walked before us and those that have come after us. And all of this is an embodied practice. And Thai massage is done, as you said earlier, it's done fully clothed and, and on a mat on the floor. And me as the practitioner, when I'm giving uh, body work, I'm using, of course, my hands, uh, my thumbs, but in elbows, which normally a practitioner also uses when you're um, receiving body work on a table. But in addition, I'm able to use my feet, my knees, my so whole you're just body. Standing over exactly. That sounds like abuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's very gentle. But I'm able to utilize all of my body work experience um, with yoga and movement and the martial arts. Um, it becomes a dance, and, and it is definitely a meditation on the floor. But the receiver doesn't have to lift a finger. So some people say they call it the lazy man's yoga because it's like having yoga done to you. And I used to say that, um, but as I've matured in the practice, I really feel Thai massage is so much more uh, than yoga, but you can find the yoga asanas within the practice. And what are the benefits of Thai massage? What are some of the benefits? Yeah. So the benefits of Thai massage and, and most massage in general um, increase blood circulation, increase um, oxygen, moving of lymphatic fluids and toxins, of course, release of m muscle tension and adhesions, um, a range of motion for your joints to increase the synovial fluid, um, to decrease blood pressure. There's, we could go on and on. It's almost like what is massage not good for? Um, and if you ever notice when you go to receive a massage, if they're a good massage therapist, you have to do a health intake uh, form. And a part of that is so that you can make sure that you're not having any issues that are contraindicated, meaning that are going to be harmful for you while receiving massage. But the other part of it is, is that massage really is a therapeutic um, modality. Um, it can assist with uh, sciatica. It can... Um, assist, as I stated before, with anxiety. There, of course, tennis elbow, carpal tunnel, a million other um, specific body. So, if, if if I'm going to re do some research on a massage therapist, and I and I definitely go to one. I also go to a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. My trainer says my trainer Chauncey, shout out to Chauncey. Um, he goes to a chiropractor because he works out. He said, "Man, you should go to a chiropractor, find a good massage therapist." So someone who is looking for someone, instead of going through the yellow pages, old school yellow pages, mm -hmm. or Google, what are some of the questions that they should be asking? So if I, were, if I were coming to you, what are some questions that I should be asking? I know there's some questions you, you're going to ask me, but what should I be asking you mm -hmm. as it relates to being my therapist? Okay. And again, you want to know what type of massage are you seeking, right? So... Um, because a table massage is very different than Thai massage, which is on the floor. So one, not every massage therapist, let's say, is going to be a Thai massage therapist. So being clear on what it is that you're looking for is, is a good first step. Another question that you may um, ask uh, for massage therapy, and I want to talk about uh, 
Thai massage, Thai body work, and some of the licensing and regulations around those different modalities at some other point in this interview. But you definitely want to ask, are you licensed? And it doesn't mean that um, a lic- an unlicensed person, which is illegal in most states to do massage therapy, it is you, you, you are required to have a license. But I'm sure there are plenty of people that do wonderful massage and don't have a license. Let's <laughs> yes, just be clear indeed. that that's just more of a legislative type mm-hmm. of thing. But one thing that is for sure that if you're licensed, you've been trained on ethics and boundaries and how to drape a, a person. So if you don't have this experience and they don't have a license, then you ha- there's more of a risk that maybe you are walking into a situation where someone is going to offer a service that is not what you <laughs> signed up So they for. should ask, yeah. can I see the license? I, yeah. Okay. I mean, so either you know, ask, are you licensed? Can you see the license? Okay. If you know you need to see proof, they should be able to provide that information to you mm-hmm. on the spot. What, what about some other questions that, that we should ask um, a therapist? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe how long is, uh, were, were they trained? Where were they trained? And what styles were they trained in? Um, trying to think, is there any other that you want to ask me? And it, yeah, no, I, I think that's important because again, you know, folks are looking for ways to get their bodies in shape. And a lot of times we just go to, we just go online and we see a person here, a person there. And I think we should do some research. I think we should talk to people who've actually gone to one. Referrals, I think, are really, really good. I guess, I, you know, love. I'm loving to hear you say, of course, let me see your license, where you practice, what type of practice. But then you also talk about some regulations. Yeah. You want to jump into that. What are some other What are some other things that are taking place as it relates to regulating that you started to talk about? Oh, well, with the regulations, I just wanted to talk about because with um, Thai body work, so... Thai massage has gotten very popular in the U.S. over the past years, but more so recently within the yoga community. Why why is is it so popular now? Yes, because the yoga community um, has been so commercialized, I I will say. Let me tell you, those Lululemon pants that cost like $150, (laughs) what? You know, the whole... We talked about that in the earlier show about how it's becoming... Commercial. Are you concerned about that when you start to see? Well, absolutely. I mean, and it's just like anything that we should be concerned about when it comes to our body and our, our, our well-being is that. Is it being driven by the dollar or is it being driven by the purpose? And we know that we need dollars, you know, to to live, especially here in America. And it's, it's an exchange. So I'm not saying that we can expect yoga to be free all the time, but what we can look at is how it's being commercialized, how it's being um, marketed and all of that. But with that being said, um, you know, yoga is big business these days. Huge. Even business. even wellness and self-care has become, you know, big business. And and great. That's wonderful business. You know, it's but, interesting. Let me stop you there. It's, be, it's a big business, mm-hmm. but I'm not seeing the benefits of the people's bodies and health shifting. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing people spend money. Like I'm juicing, you know, I've talked about the juicing fast and I'm doing people going there, but I'm I'm looking at their lifestyle and it's sort of not lining up. And so, again, it is becoming big business to the to not to the consumer, to, but to the people that are owning or that regulating these type of things. And I'm, I'm concerned like you, because when I see so many people flock to certain things like recently, Jay-Z and Beyonce just put this thing out about we want people to turn vegan. And I said, to them, you know, that's kind of cool. But again. You, you talked about it. You got to understand your type of health, your body, you, you know, understand your family history, all these different things. And so when you start to see these individuals who have resources to to get all these things for their own bodies and encouraging other people in one sense, it's OK. But in the other sense is do your research. Don't just go out here and spend all this money. And here you say now that Thai massage is becoming popular because it's now connected to to yoga it is it is a big concern well yeah i think i think it's a concern but everything evolves and moves you know at its own pace and then you have to adapt and then you have to have the integrity within yourself to seek out you know the authenticity i'm not from thailand and i'm practicing thai massage all this time you i thought you were from thailand i thought i was from thailand but but my point with that with uh thai massage because it is being practiced by a lot of 
uh, yoga instructors because naturally there's a lot of similarities within the yoga postures and asanas. A lot of states um, to be a Thai massage therapist, it's, it doesn't fall under the massage licensing guidelines because there it's presented as under the context of energy work. And it is true that Eastern massage, which is Thai massage, is an Eastern medicine versus a Western massage um, modality like the table. There is more of an emphasis on the energy lines in Chinese. We know them as meridian lines or, you know, within Ayurveda, nadis or sin lines for Thai massage. Um, that is the case. However, it is a kind of a fine line because I feel like I could, as a massage therapist, which I can do both since I'm, I'm, I'm licensed with no real question, I think it's more likely that I could hurt someone doing Thai massage than I could doing Western massage. But the Thai massage is not necessarily uh, uh, regulated, per se. And I'm not advocating of whether it should be or shouldn't be. I'm just making the distinction that to work and touch people on a table, I have to be licensed. But for the Thai massage and Thai body work, the licensing varies a little bit. What's the toughest part of being a, a, a massage therapist? Any particular challenges? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that um, comes up immediately, which also goes back to when you're asking the types of questions to ask, is as a massage therapist, you know, each person is different. And the level of touch and quality of touch is what is important and critical for all of the uh, mental health, mental, um, physical, and spiritual layers that I'm referring to. And... But you really don't know the type of pressure that someone needs. You can learn to um, look at how their breathing is being regulated, their facial expressions. And a good massage therapist is going to be very in tune with all of your body's responses. Because, and then they're going to adjust naturally. But still, you can't. I have not learned how to get into the body of another person to know whether there needs to be more pressure or less pressure. And everyone has different needs. And I find that as a massage therapist, I would say that is the most difficult aspect for me is, is really um, being in tune with that. But it comes over time and, each, and sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. But I think that's why it's important that people communicate with their therapist so that they're getting the quality of care that they need from their therapist. Mm. So what are some of the um, lessons that you've learned about yourself from, from performing uh, body work on other folks and the people that you just come across? Well, I mean, every session, first of all, is a meditation. It's a lesson. It's a healing. It's an exchange. You know, I'm not doing something to a person that I'm holding space to allow healing to occur. And that's an exchange. And when I'm touching another person, they're also touching me. You can't touch a person and not be touched. Mm -hmm. So every exchange that I encounter, whether it be with, um, with yoga, uh, meditation, or massage therapy, it's a moment to really become present in my own body and really see what's going on with my body and then to address in whatever way that I can to assist another piece, person in becoming aware and present of their own body. Because I think it, it really is about balance. Body work, massage therapy, yoga, Reiki, martial arts, you know, going to work, driving a bus, everything is about finding balance, right? It, it's not about finding any extreme to one side or the other. And where there is some obstruction, then you go to that area to divide, to find the ease and find the way. Where is it that we're not flowing? Where are we stagnant? So that's really what body work is simplified down into is what is, where is the place of ease? So speaking of ease and speaking of balance, because I've heard you say that word more than one time, um, how do you stay fit in order to mm -hmm. then do body work on other people? Can you walk us? Can you walk us through your daily ritual in the morning? I, I love Ink Magazine. Every year, Ink Magazine in January they put out lessons from the most productive people, mm -hmm. and Pharrell has been on it. I think this month uh, the cover is a Janelle Monae, and they all talk about their rituals from five. You know, when they when they get up until the end of the day. Can you sort of walk us through what your your, your typical day looks like? And then what do you do to then prepare yourself to then then pour into other people. 
Okay. Um, my I don't have specific rituals every single day at every hour. So, but in general, one thing I do every day for the past three years is I take a bath and I do my meditation in the water. And I found out three years ago during a Deepak 21 day meditation that I like to meditate within submerged in water. So that's one thing that I start off my day every day is submerging myself in water and doing my meditations. And then I also uh, do my prayers um, and I do have a, a, a sacred altar and prayer space that I do my prayers in. And I may do yoga, I may do movement, I may do dance. I, I'm not a routine. Do yeah, I've seen some of your single. video dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, every day is not exactly. But you have a ritual and a routine. I, I consider it so, but not that specific. And every day and every minute, it's not the, the, the same. But how, how important yes, is that to you? I, I think it's very important. Um, and then also prior to preparing to do body work with a person, it's additional to my own everyday regular self-care activities that I do. Um, I cleanse and sage my space. Um, time massage, there's actually prayers that should be done daily um, as, as a as a time massage practitioner, and it basically just honors, you know, your community, your teachers, um, uh, the Buddha. This time massage is derived from a, a, a Buddhist uh, tradition, and um, and then it's about creating compassion and meta and goodwill uh, for that person that you are touching, and protecting yourself uh, spiritually, energetically, um, cleansing yourself. And there's many ways different people do that. Before and after touching uh, a person, whether that be hands on or an energetic ex- exchange. Mm-hmm. So, can you name a time? Um, can you name a time when your patience was tested with one of your clients, where you mm-hmm. just, you know, you just would, you would, you would, you would try it on that day for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. It could have been anything. Mm-hmm. What's What's so funny is because I'm also a business management consultant, which I've been for many, many years. And I feel like my patience gets way more tested every day discussing financial statements, new <laughs> hires, and terminations. And, and it's almost a, a refuge when I'm working, doing my body work. And I think it's just because I'm in more of a meditative state and I'm placed there and I'm open and receptive when I'm doing body work that um, I, I actually don't get as impatient and I'm trying to think of a specific instance, and thankfully, I really can't think of any. But one does come to mind. I did do a group um, healing activity. And what tries my patience, and this comes from my business background, is when people are not clear with what they expect. Um, And that's more so from a a business one-on-one. I was a presenter, and um, I had a certain time slot as in a certain time to speak and then it got totally changed around and I can flow organically. That's not a problem, but it it just went a couple of times too many. And don't be venting my on on my radio show. (laughs) Well, you said, tell you an instance of where where I lost my patience. It was here. (laughs) But um, yeah, those are more of, I think the administrative aspects, um, of body work, which is always there versus a therapeutic one-on-one exchange. I've I've learned to be very fluid in those exchanges. Mm -hmm. So I've known you to be a person, you know, that travels all over the country. You and I got a chance to travel to Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, And that was an amazing experience. And I also know that you are very African-centered. African Mm -hmm. culture is all throughout your all throughout your DNA, but you also are open to other cultures as mm-hmm. well. And I really appreciate that. Um, but let's talk about our community. You know, what has been the stigma when it comes to massage, body work, therapy in the African community, African American community? And then how have you sort of dealt with that? Mm-hmm. Well, first and foremost, the one I mentioned earlier, stigma, body work, um, oh, it's sexual. I'm not going to be safe. And I, I don't know what a person is going to do. And but beyond that is there's a lot of trauma in our communities. And so there are some very legitimate uh, fears and concerns around touch 
and being touched. So let's just be clear that there's a lot of work in that area of our community that we need to um, address around touch. There's a saying, the body holds trauma, and that is true. However, I like to always discuss the body in context of its positive nature. The body holds joy, the body holds excitement, the body holds love, the body holds peace. And so really getting people to see that their body is a positive thing in our community, I think is important because a lot of times we're naming our arthritis. What's our, our, <laughs> our you know, give it you know, names, yeah. we give it names, you know, it's our best friend, my diabetes, my this. you right, oh, we my do back. take ownership we of that stuff. We take ownership <laughs> of my Ill- Ill- illnesses, right? And so um, yes. I think in our community, I don't see that as much in other communities. In other communities, I see a more of an openness to other natural ways of healing. If you lay your hand and not move, what are you doing to me? Are you putting something on me? Some bad energy. We have a lot of um, misperceptions about what body work is. And from whether it be a Christian perspective, an Islamic perspective, or um, I guess we don't really have it. Well, we have some Hebrew Israelites in our communities. Um, we're highly spiritual beings, no matter what path we've taken. And so a lot of times body work may come up and raise some issues about where a person's spiritual spiritual background is and what you're going to do. And I think that blocks us from getting the therapeutic uh, attention that we need. And the last thing I would say within our community that I think is a barrier um, is the idea of, I'm not spending money on body work or, or massage, but yet we'll spend all types of money on drugs, doctor's visits, braces, ice, downtime from work, from having issues with the body that really could be addressed if people sought out a consistent body work practice, i.e. massage therapy, you know, yoga, whatever it is. Um, So one of of the things, and this this is the topic that folks don't like to talk about when you talk about uh, you know, massages and, and touch. You know, there's several um, massage therapists that I've gone to, and I'm always concerned at just about be, getting aroused. Like, I'm like, man, what do I do if I straight up get aroused up in this joint? You know, how can I hide that? Have you ever felt that way? Have you? And we're not just talking about men, because again, you know, women as well. Have has that ever happened to you? And then how do you handle something like that when someone is getting aroused? Because again, we know the power of touch is profound. You know, it is it is very, very profound and it can do some things to your body. Like you talked about the trauma where it makes you nervous, you get anxious, but it also is this feeling of, man, I'm really liking the work the direction right. it's going. How do you handle something like exactly. that? Exactly. So um the way as massage therapists we handle that one, the body has natural functions, right? And just because someone, and I'm going to use a male um, because it, it's a, a lot easier, I think, to tell with a male yes, whether or not is. they <laughs> become aroused. Yes. And um, in and of itself, becoming aroused is not really an issue to most massage therapists. Because you are increasing blood flow, there's circulation. So there could be a very legitimate reason why that happens involuntarily to a person. Now, if that person also with that shows no uh, level of uh, embarrassment, concern, and then it's trying to maybe on the side trying to touch you and is trying to engage you in inappropriate sexual activity, well, then that's a clear stop, finish, the session is over. Um, that there, there, it, there is no uh, considerations for that's, that. That's when you're a martial arts expert. Yeah, pretty much. You know, that's when you have to get out of the way. Yes, just, the you know, No, but, but, but in general, um, in my personal practice, when I'm doing table massage, and again, I do specialize in Thai massage, which is fully clothed, but also is a different, you know, um, can have the same thing happen. But speaking of table massage, I like to use a sheet and a blanket for my male 
customers. Um, some people may say, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't want the blanket. I like to have the blanket because to me that provides a, a heavier weight on a male so that if they were to get aroused, it's not, you know, that obvious and they can, you know, handle that and you could stop and remove your hands. You know, you're never going to be within a person's private area. So unless you have a groin pool or adductor where you, you've had a specific injury and there's specific protocols around working in even those areas under those circumstances. So I just want to say that in therapeutic massage and body work, you're not doing anything to elicit an aroused response, but it happens and we don't make a big deal of it. You may, you can be reassuring and most, and I've had it happen one time and the person was very embarrassed and you could tell, and, and I just stayed calm and I said, it happens. And you can then also turn a person over onto their stomach. There's a lot of different ways to do that, but not having clear boundaries and ethics and draping invites a lot Indeed. of that. Yeah, I'm not saying it happened to me, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I have gone into spaces and like, wow, what if this actually happens? And what I like that you said that it's okay, it's natural. And I yeah. think a lot of times when we add these negative words to things, then it really, really confuses people. Because again, you're talking about touch. I mean, because you, you can sit here and say when you touch somebody, they get nervous, they start to reflect on, it's a trigger from something that happened bad. Mm -hmm. They can also be a trigger right. to something uh, that happens good. So speaking of triggers, why do you feel that your work is really geared toward women? You know, explain that to me. Why, why focus on women when it comes to your work? Yeah, and I focus on women and specifically black women uh, because I want, I am a black woman. And I think that as women, we are so powerful and we are such givers and we, were, we are so intuitive. But sometimes our self-care is lacking. And I think that the more that we can gather together as women and breathe and learn to move and to implement these self-care activities and make them as a part of our lifestyle, I think that, you know, our blood pressure, our blood sugar, all of that will start to come into alignment. Because I, I do think that um, as women, we are under a lot of stress and pressure. I think as people we are, you know, I don't want to take that away from men, especially uh, black men. But I think we all are really under a lot of uh, pressure in turbulent times from a, from a psychic perspective, from a, a mental energetic perspective and the more we can start to incorporate holistic ways of eating and being um, the more we can start to heal and be more productive givers and receivers in our society this is my favorite part of the show uh -oh. it's called the super bomb questions <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're ready for this. This is rapid fire. Uh, this is rapid fire. So I'm going to throw out some quick statements to you. And I just want you to respond immediately. I want you to give it a whole bunch of canvas, <laughs> deep massage, deep meditation. I want you to respond as quickly as possible. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. What's your favorite word? Favorite word? Ubuntu. <laughs> Rocking the shirt right now. <laughs> um what is an unusual habit or an absurd thing that you love that other people don't? Hot sauce and salt. <laughs> <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise. Shh. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your superpower? Intuitive. And what is your spirit animal? My spirit animal is definitely a big old cat, a big uh, panther or a leopard, but it is definitely a cat. Definitely a cat. <laughs> what are you reading? Anything that you're reading right now? I'm, all, I'm always reading. And um, the book I just started, I couldn't give you any information on, is called Impress. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or lost your focus temporarily, what do you do to come back? Cry. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a good cry. cry. Ain't nothing like a good cry. If you had a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, it could all it could it actually be in the state of Pennsylvania where mm -hmm. you're from. 
getting a message out to millions or billions, mm -hmm. what would be on that billboard? Touch is sacred. So we're going to end it right there. But before we end it, I want you to let our listeners know how they can get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. So I have a Facebook page called Sacred Touch Body Work. And I have a website through massagebook.com and just type in Sacred Touch Body Work Hyattsville. Um, I really appreciate what you are bringing uh, to the universe with what you're doing. And I, it's been amazing to watch you on social media, watching just your whole energy shift and watching you with some of the images of some of the women, because I know you do a lot of work with women. I and I think that that's so important. All right. So, Candace, thank you for joining me in the bomb show. It's been great talking with you. You truly bless me and my listeners. I wish you much, much success. I also want to thank my producer, Darius Wilmore and Supremacy for our theme music and to all my listeners that are out there. And as I always believe that something wonderful is about to happen and that some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess. Thank you for tuning in and do something for someone else other than yourself today. Peace.